We've all seen it before. It's cold outside and a diesel engine just will not start. Hey folks, how's it going? It's R&D Diesel here today. And in today's video, we're going to try to attempt to explain why diesel engines have cold start problems. You know, a while back here in Texas, we finally got some snow, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to finally do a cold start on my truck. So it got down like 15 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Pretty darn cold by Texas standards, at least. And I went to go start my truck, and what do you know, it doesn't start. The reason for that was my glow plug relay was actually sticking. Kind of hacks me off since this is a relatively new motorcraft unit. But I ended up hitting it with a hammer. That's a nifty little trick. You just tap the relay with a hammer, and that usually unseizes it, and it'll work just fine like it needs to. But in today's video, stay tuned because we're going to attempt to explain why diesel engines have problems cold starting. Now, if you know anything about how diesel engines work, you know that they operate by taking in fresh air, compressing it until it heats up, and then ejecting the diesel fuel so that it can bust, and then of course ejecting those spent exhaust gases. Now, because diesel engines operate this way, there's a certain limit as to how hot the air can actually get after compression. The colder the air is to begin with, the less hot it's going to be after the compression occurs. And in some instances, especially during winter, the air is too cold to start with that it simply cannot ignite the diesel fuel. As a result, diesel engines utilize glow plugs to help start whenever it's cold outside. Essentially, the glow plug acts as a miniature space heater inside of the cylinder. You send electricity through it, it glows and heats up the air inside so that combustion can occur. Now, of course, once the engine gets up to operating temperature, the glow plug is shut off and it runs as normal. Now, the ultimate goal here is to understand what's going on inside the diesel engine and why our diesel engines have cold start problems. Now, I'm a mechanical engineer by training, so I have a good understanding of the physical principles that are involved, and hopefully we can use that to get an understanding as to what's really going on. Fortunately, thanks to thermodynamic principles, we can actually approximate the heat from compression inside of a diesel engine via this process known as isentropic compression. Now, isentropic literally just means that entropy is constant. Now, basically putting that in simpler terms, it means that we're assuming this compression occurs without any sort of friction loss, any sort of heat loss or heat gain to the fluid with which we are compressing. In this case, it'll be air. Now, there's a couple of simple equations that we can use that, based off of the ratio of our, our compression ratio that we have or our change in volume, we can actually figure out how hot this air is going to get. Okay, so using those isentropic compression equations and using a compression ratio of 17.5 to 1 as is applicable for the 7.3 power stroke, I ultimately ended up creating this nice graph that you see here that plots the ambient air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and the resulting temperature we get after the compression has occurred inside of the cylinder. Now, interesting thing to note here is that the compression temperature actually is a lot hotter than you might really expect. And this really doesn't quite make sense. And this is where I think you will see the motivation I have for this video. So for starters, the auto ignition temperature of diesel fuel is about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. What that means is that we have to ignite, we have to heat up this diesel fuel and air to 500 degrees Fahrenheit approximately at a minimum in order for it to combust. But as you can see here, our lowest temperature at approximately 10 degrees below zero is about 960 Fahrenheit. And that's way above the auto ignition temperature of diesel. So what's going on here? There's got to be more to the story. And so that is what we're going to delve into, and we're going to see if we can figure out more of the, what is going on. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Oh, of course it's wrong. It's because we're trying to take theoretical stuff and apply it to a real-world diesel engine. So of course it's going to be wrong, right? Well, that's not necessarily the case. I wouldn't say that this part is wrong, it's just an incomplete model for the diesel engine. So we're going to see if we can throw in some more factors and see if we can actually come up with a reasonable idea as to what's really going on here. Okay, so at this point we've established that isentropic compression doesn't entirely describe what's going on inside of a diesel engine. If it were, then we wouldn't have any cold start issues and that would be awesome, but that's definitely not the case. You know, up till now, there's one thing that we haven't exactly been considering, and that is the diesel fuel itself. If you think about it, during the combustion process, that diesel fuel has to go from the ambient air temperature, regardless of how cold it is, it has to be injected into the cylinder, it has to be heated up, 
then vaporize at least somewhat enough so that it can actually combust with the air. But there is some vaporization going on there, so doesn't that take a tremendous amount of energy? It's break time! No! Oh, oh. oh, man, I wasn't talking about that kind of a break! <laughs> a common technique used to cool the intake charge for gasoline engines is to actually inject excess amount of gasoline, such that when it vaporizes, it actually takes a tremendous amount of heat with it to cool the intake charge air. Now this is useful to prevent knock inside of a gasoline engine, but is that same effect present inside a diesel engine with a significant margin? To find out, I started by gathering some data on my 7.3. I figured out from my scan gauge too what the approximate fuel consumption was at idle. Translated that into a fuel consumption per hour that seemed reasonable, and I also made some generous assumptions. For one, I assume that the specific heat capacity for the diesel fuel was the same in both the liquid and in the vapor state. Now, of course, this isn't actually true, but if anything, it serves to overestimate the effect that the diesel fuel has on the temperature inside the cylinder. I also wanted to study exactly what was going on at a specified temperature, say 50 degrees Fahrenheit, as I found from experience that that's the temperature at which my diesel engine starts to have issues starting without the glow plugs. Now, with all of this information, I was able to approximate what the air-fuel and fuel-air ratios were for my diesel engine. And as no surprise, the air-fuel ratio for my 7.3 was significantly higher than that of a comfortable gasoline engine. For reference, a typical gasoline engine operates at an air-fuel ratio of about 14.7 to 1. That is 14.7 parts air to about 1 part fuel. Now as you can see, the calculated air-fuel ratio for my 7.3 is about 106 to 1. Now, that might be a little bit of an over-approximation, but nonetheless, this seems reasonable, as diesel engines typically run much, much leaner than a typical gasoline engine. Now, because the fuel is present in such small quantities relative to air inside the diesel engine, this serves to indicate that the injection of the fuel doesn't play a significant role in decreasing the temperature inside the cylinder. Even if we offer a very generous margin for the effect of diesel injection, it still doesn't come close to explaining this dark temperature change that we would expect that causes the diesel engine to have cold start issues. Now since we are on the topic of diesel fuel, I wanted to talk about another legitimate reason that causes diesel engines to have issues cold starting. Now especially in cold environments, when the diesel fuel gets cold enough, a lot of the waxes and paraffins inside of the fuel itself will actually coalesce into a nice big blob, a gel if you will and it can actually clog up the entire fuel system and cause it to not work at all. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of your diesel engines have fuel heaters to aid during the winter season. I've actually got two samples here that I just got out of the freezer. I want to see what would happen if I had some diesel fuel stuck in the freezer. Now the freezer I got out of was about three degrees below zero. And this here is some canola oil that you see. And it is just a complete blob. It's basically just a bunch of wax. And that's not going to flow at all inside your fuel system. But even more impressively is I have this diesel fuel that I actually got from the pump. This is the same stuff that's in my truck right now. And it flows just fine. It doesn't have any cloggingness to it, and it's definitely not gelled up. Now, the reason for this is that it is still winter here where I'm at. And hopefully this stuff's actually winterized. It must be. Essentially what you can do is you can have certain additives. You can winterize the diesel fuel so that it doesn't gel up. You can lower that gel point, lower that cloud point, so that you don't have those issues. We've established quite a bit up till now, but yet there's still a missing piece to the puzzle. First off, we know isentropic compression tells us that we can indeed generate the heat necessary for combustion to occur, pretty much regardless of what the ambient air temperature is. We also know that diesel engines typically operate with a relatively lean burn. This means that there's a small amount of fuel relative to the air inside of the cylinder, and thus for all intents and purposes, we can neglect the heat loss to vaporizing the diesel fuel. But yet the question still remains, where does all that heat go? The only remaining possibility has to do with our most basic assumption for the diesel engine, and that is that compression inside of it is isentropic, meaning that no heat is lost to the surroundings. Unfortunately, that's not actually the case, especially for a cold diesel engine. In fact, our remaining heat does get lost to the surroundings. In fact, many of the interior engine components, especially when cold, including the engine block, pistons, and even the cylinder head, can remove a significant portion of the heat that was originally attributed to the compression process out of the cylinder, 
and this is where the bulk of our cold start problems arise. The way this works can be expressed with a graph. If we were to plot the temperature difference versus the rate of heat transfer, we would see that heat transfers significantly quicker as we have a greater temperature difference, that is, hot air from compression and a relatively cold engine block. So we know that our engine block is going to sap out heat, but what can we do about it? For starters, we can use glow plugs, even when the engine is running, to add the heat back into the cylinder that was originally lost to the engine components. We can also use an engine block heater to preheat the engine components prior to startup. This reduces the temperature differential, reduces the heat loss to the surroundings, and can essentially eliminate the cold start issues altogether. And last but not least, you can avoid the cold altogether and just move south. Well, you guys, that pretty much does it for this video here today. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comment box below. Take care.